Every year at Congregation, UBC has the honor of bestowing honorary degrees upon individuals who, in the opinion of the university community, have fit the criteria of excellence and eminence in their chosen field. Robert Hung Nai Ho is one of those individuals, and I invite him now to come forward to receive his honorary degree. Mr. Vice Chancellor, few British Columbians seem to live and breathe the teachings of Buddha, as does Robert Ho. Indeed, we are fortunate to call Dr. Ho one of our own, although many great cities around the world, Hong Kong, New York, and London, to name a few, would like to make a similar claim. After a successful career in business and journalism, Dr. Ho did not simply retire to the golf course. Rather, he turned his attention to our cultural landscapes. Through the Robert H. N. Ho Family Foundation, he launched the United Kingdom's first permanent gallery of Buddhism sculpture at the Victoria and Albert Museum. He brought the mythical terracotta warriors from China for their first visit to Canada, and he began art education programs to inspire creativity among young people in Hong Kong. The foundation has endowed the Center for Buddhist Studies at Stanford University and funded the establishment of Buddhism Ministry Studies at Harvard Divinity School. Here at UBC, Dr. Ho carried on the legacy of his grandmother and helped establish North America's first Buddhism and Contemporary Studies program uh, through the Tung Ling Kok Yun Canada Foundation. And the Robert H. N. Ho Research Center at Vancouver General Hospital, which houses some of the top UBC scientists in cancer and mobility research, has established groundbreaking research with immediate, far-reaching benefits for seniors and people suffering from prostate and ovarian cancers. Dr. Ho, you once said that Buddhism stresses the need for kindness at every level, from personal relations to global actions. You are living proof that one man's kindness and compassion can reverberate around the world. Mr. Vice Chancellor, for his tireless philanthropy, I ask you to confer the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa on Robert Ho. By authority of the Senate of this university, I confer upon you, Robert Hon Ein Ho, the title and degree, Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. It gives me great pleasure to now ask Dr. Ho to say a few words. Mr. Vice Chancellor, thank you very much for this very special honor. And to the class of 2012 at UBC, my heartfelt congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, when I was asked to speak today, I decided to focus on two sayings from my grandfather, Sir Robert Ho Tong. First, he said, before you can receive, you must learn how to give. Now I recognize that I have been greatly blessed 
I come from a strong and successful family who brought me up to think deeply about my uh, responsibilities in this world. In preparation for today, I thought about the moments in my life that matters to me most. I thought about the people who opened my eyes, my mind, my heart to the possibilities in the world. The people who share their passion and energy for life and the people who accepted a responsibility to give of themselves. My grandfather was born in 1862 into very different circumstances than we face today. He grew up in colonial Hong Kong. From an early age, he accepted he had a big responsibility to fulfill. He recognized that giving all his hard work and determination would be the keys to opportunity. Like all of us, my grandfather didn't have any control over the world into which he was born. He couldn't choose his parents, he couldn't choose his country, he couldn't choose his appearance, but he did have control over the responsibility he would take for shaping the kind of world he would leave behind when he died. He could work to ensure there were opportunities for his children, their children, and the children of people he would never meet. He built companies, a hospital, and help a university to expand and to modernize the society which he lived. To do that, he gave of himself, of his energy, of his talent, of his determination to fulfill his responsibility to build a better world. Not to uh, Before you can receive, you must learn to give, to give. To give fully of yourself, whatever you do. By not accepting the limited opportunities of the world in which he was born, he rose above it. My grandfather also said, I want to wear out. I do not want to rust out. He wanted to leave the world having given everything he could until he could give no more. In other words, to wear out by being active and useful. It is not worth your time to sit around and regret the things that you could have done, the people you could have met, the places you could have seen, the opportunities you could have pursued. It is not your, worth your while to sit around and rusting away. To wear out rather than rust out, need to act, need to do something. You and I are now not only alumni of this special university, we also carry specific knowledge about the world and its people. Whether you study the natural sciences or the theoretical, whether you learn a new language or a new way of critical thinking, you each have been part of a very unique process. So let's promise to wear out from using your energy, let us take up our responsibility to make our place, wherever it is, better than when we first arrived. I wish you a great adventure as you journey forth. Remember, before you can receive, you must learn how to give. And if your journey is great and your purpose true, then rusting out of life won't be an option. Living fully will be your only course. Good luck and have a good journey. Thank you.